boom, boom. Oh, hey, we're live. Hey, good morning out there in the world of Scrum and Agile world. I am Greg Master, Scrum Master and Agile Coach, and this is the 5 a.m. Master Scrum Show. It's about 6, so 6, I think, according to the clock on my laptop here. And uh, this is our 469th episode. I put a little clip out yesterday instead of doing an episode yesterday just to see if that would do anything. I was experimenting with the YouTube algorithms and it didn't really help any. But anyway, I was experimenting with that to see what would happen if I didn't put out um, the live content every day and just put a little clip out there of uh, stuff. Anyway, this is 5am Master Scrum Show where we talk about Agile and Scrum in a practical and tactical way. So that you can bring value to your customer, get home to family and friends, not work 50, 60, 80 hours a week, and have a little fun along the way. So that's what we do. Um, bring different things, things I encounter is what I do. Um, I'm looking over here because there's a, there's a cat sitting here next to me, hitting me with her tail. I'm just like, what are you doing? Um, very distracting. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I think she knows it too. Um so what was I talking about? I was talking about. So put out a little clip, uh, 15 second clip, a little, they call it short, of uh, my son and I doing a Coke and Mentos experiment, one of our sprints where we finally used the magnet, got it to finally work the way it was, and it just went, boom. It was pretty cool. I had fun. I did be honest with you. It was fun. It's fun experimenting, having him grow and do things and do things on his own without me telling them what to do or showing them what to do or doing it for them, right? And that's that's the agile way of getting the teams to be self-organizing and self-sufficient, right? So put that out. So today I want to talk about a couple of things. Almost kind of related to that, to that, staying out of the way. And also one of my retrospective things. I'm debating whether I want to talk about that today or not or save it for tomorrow, but we'll see. But, um, yeah, I'll talk about that today, Phil, uh, for today's show, where we did a bunch of retrospectives at my where I'm currently working, and I want to tell you a little story about that, <laughs> where, where it goes. So, uh, and also, by the way, they decided to clamp down here in Philadelphia because of the virus, and pretty much everything's going to shut down, almost, I hope not. Restaurants should still open, but you can't go in at all now and they got some weird numbers and I don't think anybody can do anything inside for a while but we'll see we'll see how all that goes and uh, I have an idea for maybe Thanksgiving weekend I got a plan for it see if I can do it and uh, it might be interesting I don't know it'll be an experiment who can, who knows as long as my wife doesn't kill me for doing all that anyway all right staying out of the way one of the things that's very, very tough for people that are quote, agile coaches or scrum masters or used to be project managers or now scrum masters and things like that is staying out of the way. I even catch myself at times having that trouble. I'm just being honest. I'm like, you know, we're not all saints and, and perfect people and all that kind of stuff. Where I had a, my job, what it came to be at the time was to get two people that weren't working together together and have them talk just to two of them, not a whole team, not a whole crew, just so they can be truthful and build a trusting relationship with them. It's all now that I do this on purpose. I no, I, I, but I wanted to get them in the room and see what would happen and let it go. And, and sometimes you got to step out of the way as an agile coach and let the two, the two individuals work together and talk right? And you just stay out of it. It may not be going the direction you want. And I tell you right now, sometimes it wasn't going the direction I wanted. And I so badly wanted to, to chime in. And I will admit one or two times I did chime in because it was going off in a thing. I said, well, what's wrong with that? Right. And, you know, and, and then bring them back to discussing the topics and the heart points they had. So every once in a while I had to chime in and ask some powerful questions and, and they would like one was like, well, you can't do that. And well, why can't you do that? Right. And, and what are the things that prevent that from happening? And, and what do you want to talk about? Not what me, Greg Mester wanted to talk about, what, what they wanted to talk about. So sometimes as an agile coach and scrum master, when, and in the scrum master world, you get your team, you may have people, two people in the team not really working well together 
and your job is to get them together and maybe you act as a middle person. And my role as I see it now, but it can change, right? You have to be flexible. My role really is just to, to be there to be a neutral party to support the two individuals that are working together. And sometimes I just like having that there and I just be there and be supportive. Right. And if they have questions, they ha can you do this in agile, Greg, or what's the organizational thing and what's that? And, and then what do you think about this? And then I just help out where I can. Right. And sometimes that's all we do. We just set that. We're like that little fire starter in the conversation. That's our job as agile coach. It's not to solve the problem. So many agile coaches think it's their job to solve the problem and tell the two individuals how to work together. I take the opposite approach. My my approach, what I really believe in agile coaches there, is just to help facilitate and nurture the conversation. Whatever way it goes, make sure it doesn't get all violent. <laughs> I mean, that is a role because it can happen. Trust me, when you got two people that are kind of like head and button heads, you know, it could blow up and get very, very um, negative. And your job as an agile coach is to quell that negativity a little bit and make sure it doesn't get like really dangerous or really detrimental to the to the relationship between the two people. So sometimes the job of an agile coach is to stay out of the way. Let it foster, let it turn to whatever the people want. It may not be what you want as an agile coach or scrum master, but it's what they want it to turn into. As long as it become doesn't become self-destructive and things like that, then then you let it go, right? And we're going to do a couple more sessions. And even the one person, we'll do this a couple of times, you know, a week and we'll just click sink in and I'll make sure I join. So I'll share it out with you. Sometimes the Agile Coach's job is not to do anything, to stay out of the way of the conversation between people that we get together. But we get them together, then we step out, right? Okay. So that was one of the topics. Now, the other topic was my retro. I'm just giving you things that, I have done, <laughs> and sometimes I gotta laugh at myself. So we got an organization. There's some 40 teams that we're coaching, and I'm working as an enterprise coach alongside about five or six other agile coaches. Somehow I have eight teams right now. Well, I only had to do seven teams this time, but anyway. So I'm helping them with a the retro. They were doing a survey. What can we do? How we improve the organization? And that's a real good thing. And you have to you have to be realistic in what you get out of these surveys. Well, anyway, so and they always ask me like, okay, how do you want to do this? How do we do this, Greg? What do we do? What do we do next steps? So I help walk through that process a lot of times. Um, again, I just try to let the group decide. I'm not. I don't want to tell everybody what to do, and they're always looking for that. But I want the group to to come up with it. So. They gave me the results. And in this results, we write all these action items. So what I noticed in my action items, and I looked at it and I said, oh, my God, what did I do, right? Um, so all, all these teams. I noticed these couple teams that had like 12 action items, 10 action items, or more than eight. It's somewhere between eight and 12 action items per these teams. And I go, wow, all these other teams only had one or two action items. And these other teams had eight to 12. And I go, I look at the name, I go over and look at it and said, uh oh, they were all my teams. I'm like, I screwed up, didn't I? But um, but I don't know if I did or not, right? I screwed up with I got a lot more work to do now because I worked I worked well at getting I view my job is to get them to talk, get them identify things that can help improve, even if it's just to say it and share with the organization, with the team level, with the individual. And, um, you know, we only got an hour, right? We got to talk about all everything. So it's like a whole, we haven't had this survey in a year. So there's all this stuff going on and what's going on. And my job, I envision it is get everybody in the room to add something, to say something, to bring it up, different areas. We're not going to solve any problems in that meeting because it's not possible to solve it in a one hour discussion, especially from a whole year's worth of stuff. But I just, the numbers, it was like, Oh God, what did I do? Oh no. Cause I, cause I got like, like it's clear as bell. I'm like, Oh shoot. They're all my team. So I got to average like 10 items because what I did is as they find something 
and we, we assign people. If I had different people who were assigned to do different things that improve the process, that L became a different action item in the system attracted. So I'm just sharing that with you. Maybe I went a little overboard, but I thought it was interesting how all my teams were like 10 to 12 items and all the other teams had one or two, you know, um, Part of me is like, I did a great job of getting everybody to talk and I did a bad job of keeping me from having to do a lot of follow up and everything. But you know what? That's my job as an agile coach. I'd rather have gotten people to say things that are hampering them from doing their job, express that, share that with management so they all are aware of what's going on in the, in the situation. So it's not all hunky dory. You know, there's a lot of orders, at least a lot of teams. Oh, yeah, everything's perfect. Everything's person behind them. Everything's blowing up. Right. So <laughs> I like a little truth in the world and I encourage everybody to say things, even though if it's not going to get fixed, that they should say it just so everybody's aware that that's an issue. Because I'll be honest with you, when people don't share, management thinks everything's great and they don't need to fix anything or nothing, nothing's bad in the organization. So I'm a believer, like just say stuff, you know, maybe, maybe we'll fix something. Maybe we think something will get better. But again, this is my own little personal story. <laughs> just shared it with you because I talked a little bit about all these retros I had done and then just capturing all the information from all those teams. And uh, I just I just think it's funny. <laughs> funny, scary. Anyway, so that's what I have for today. Today is Tuesday, and I wish everybody a happy scrumming. Please give us a thumbs up if you like our show. Um, send us ideas or comments or things you want to talk about. I am doing a meeting in Pakistan, a Pakistan group on the 22nd. I will be posting up some stuff as I go. It's going to be about product owners in the servant leader role. And it's fun. I love talking about it. I love sharing. I love, I can't wait to hear the, the feedback and what everybody thinks about a product owner. I'm just looking forward to that. It'll be a great conversation. And then ring the little bell. So you get a notification when we do go live and we do post up material. You get little notes and you get a um, notification of stuff going up there. We do talk about Agile and Scrum and have a little fun along the way. And um, I'll be sharing more stuff as we go. All right. So thanks again. Have a great day. Happy Scrumming. Take it easy. Be safe out there. Be healthy. Take your vitamins, you know, um, social distance and everything like that. And uh, enjoy your day. All right. Take care. Bye. See ya. See ya.